Welcome to our channel. In ancient times, amidst the Amazon rainforest thrived the so-called Golden Civilization. It is a true paradise on Earth. According to legend, the location is said to be called El Dorado. But where is it supposed to lie? And where are other legendary treasures located? In this video, we will present nine treasures that you can still find, of course, if they exist. But before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and without further ado, let's get started. Legends of rich gold deposits in South America have been passed down since the time of Christopher Columbus. Various adventurers follow in the footsteps of the Genoese navigator. Sooner or later, each of them hears the tale of a land where people are adorned in gold from head to toe, and the most determined set out in search of it. However, no one succeeds in finding it. The story of the legendary land may not have its roots in reality. Allegedly, it could have originated from a distortion of the tale of an indigenous ritual, during which their chief would wash off gold dust as an offering to the gods at the sacred Colombian lake of Guatavita. Thus, legends may have become intertwined with reality. The discovery of the land where it is said that pots are made of gold remains a dream. There is supposedly evidence that the city indeed exists, in the form of a manuscript called Manuscript 512. Its full official title is Historical Contexts of a Hidden and Great City Deep in the Amazon Jungle, Very Old, Uninhabited, Discovered in 1753. As the document's title suggests, the diary dates back to 1753, and in ten pages, records the fates of a treasure-seeking expedition who were to make an incredible discovery. However, even with the discovery of the diary containing an exact description of the location, no one has managed to find El Dorado. Even with modern technologies, we cannot verify whether the Golden City truly hides somewhere in the Amazon jungle. Will it ever be discovered? It is the year 1883, and a book titled Treasure Island is being published by the Scottish writer Robert Louis Stevenson. The adventure-filled work tells the story of the search for the hidden wealth of Captain Kidd. It is no secret that the story is inspired by reality. Since 1701, there has been speculation about the fortune amassed and hidden somewhere by a certain Captain Kidd. William Kidd lived in the 17th century and made a living as a privateer by raiding enemy ships. It is said that he gained the reputation of a bloodthirsty pirate by mistake when he plundered a vessel belonging to Armenian merchants, which branded him as an outlaw. The treasure he hid from justice was meant to be exchanged for his life. He even promised judges that if they let him go, he would bury London in gold. However, nothing of the sort happened. Kidd was executed, and for 300 years, adventurers have been searching for his fortune. They follow in the footsteps and search not only in the Caribbean, but also in the China Sea. Without success, a vast amount of gold and precious stones still awaits discovery and we can only speculate on where the legendary treasure island might be located. Stories of treasure hunts usually have a clear plot. People know that the treasure exists, but cannot determine its location. However, in the story of the treasure hidden in a pit on Oak Island in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia, it is the opposite. Everyone knows that there is something in the pit, but no one knows what. It is the year 1975 and a farmer's son, Daniel McGuinness, discovers a strange pit on Oak Island. At first he examines it, then he heads to it with a pickaxe. However, he fails to penetrate it because the pit is constantly flooded with water. Over time, it becomes clear that this is no coincidence. The hole in the ground is part of a sophisticated system that serves as a security system. Who went to such lengths to build a network of channels that prevent entry into the shaft? What rarity might be hidden in it? Clues are provided by the trifles that have already been brought out of the depths of the pit. Alongside a metal whistle, an old Spanish coin and old shoes, a stone with the inscription 10 feet below are hidden 2 million pounds is discovered in the pit. Is it a joke or clear evidence? It is the year 1533 and the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro disrupts the Inca Empire. From that moment on, the Spaniards have an open path to local wealth. They gather treasures in the newly founded city of Lima. However, when the Peruvian War of Independence breaks out in 1811, they have trouble controlling the colony, and the wealth is in jeopardy. The Spaniards observe the growing revolt in society, and decide to transport the Lima treasure to safety. 
the task is entrusted to the Scottish merchant William Thompson. Together with his men, he loads the golden fortune onto a ship and sets out on a journey. However, the desire for money is stronger than commitments. The treasure of immense value never reaches its intended destination. Where Thompson headed with the treasure is the subject of debate. When the Spaniards capture him and accuse him of piracy, he has nothing with him. During the trial, he declares that he will exchange the treasure for his life. Later, as he navigates the Spaniards towards Cocos Island, 550 kilometers from the Costa Rican coast, he flees into the jungle. He is never seen again, just like the legendary treasure. Jean Lafitte is one of the most famous pirates who sailed the world's oceans. The mystery lies not only in his uncertain origin and unexplained end, but above all in his lost treasure. It is said to reach astronomical values. Where can the wealth of the famous sea wolf be found? It is difficult to answer. Lafitte's fate is shrouded in mystery. He is said to have been born in France or a French colony in the Caribbean, and to have died in Mexico or the Azores, and it is precisely between these places that he is said to have hidden his wealth. Therefore, searching for it is akin to the proverbial needle in a haystack. However, there are also theories suggesting that the search for Lafitte's treasure is pointless. They claim that it no longer exists today. The explanation is simple. Lafitte is known as a rough sailor through and through. Therefore, it is believed that he spent his treasure during his lifetime on alcohol and other vices. However, there is no evidence to support this claim. Discovering Lafitte's treasure is therefore an extremely challenging task, and it remains a question whether anyone will ever succeed. In the Superstition Mountains of Arizona lies the largest gold mine in the world. The precious metal there is so abundant that it can be scraped off with a knife. However, there's a catch. Apart from the German explorer and adventurer Jacob Waltz, no one has ever seen it. Jacob Waltz conducts extensive research in Arizona during the 1860s. He is said to have discovered an immense gold mine. People say that he returned to the mountains every year and each time brought back huge amounts of gold. He then reportedly hosted wild parties in town with high quality gold nuggets as currency. The question of where he got the gold from continues to puzzle treasure hunters to this day. Many adventurers try to follow in Waltz's footsteps, but no one is successful. The mystery of the gold mine is therefore relegated to the realm of legends and speculation. It is said that the legendary treasure may be located not only in Arizona, but also in Colorado or California. Only local Native American tribes are said to know the way to it, but they refuse to reveal its location. It is even rumored that they let mysterious and heavily armed guardians protect it. One of the treasures from the period of World War II is said to be hidden in the Far East. It is believed that on islands in the Pacific Ocean, the property amassed by Japanese General Tomoyuki Yamashita is stored. After the signing of the Japanese surrender, Yamashita is accused of war crimes. However, investigators are not only interested in his military activities, but also in reports of his legendary treasure. The general is even said to have been tortured because of his refusal to disclose information. However, he reveals nothing. Is his silence due to the indomitable character of a soldier who refuses to reveal his loot? Or is it rather because there is nothing to reveal? Whether Yamashita's treasure existed is not clear. Nevertheless, search operations have been ongoing since the end of the war. As Filipino historian and journalist Ambeth Ocampo says, What worries me is the fact that despite such a large number of searchers, their maps, oral testimonies, metal detectors, and the most modern technology, no one has found anything at all. Does this mean that no Trisur exists? Or is it rather evidence that it was well hidden? In the 1930s, the merchant Leon Trabuco hid a giant gold treasure in the South American desert of New Mexico. Leon Trabuco conducted his activities in the southern United States. His thirst for wealth was immense, and so Trabuco presented his companions with a bold idea involving the purchase of Mexican gold reserves with the vision of selling them later at a much higher price in the United States, which was then plagued by an economic crisis. The first part of the whole plan succeeded for the comrades, and within just three months, they gathered an incredible 16 tons of gold in the form of gold ingots. However, an embargo was then declared on gold in the USA. These men suddenly had 20 tons of worthless metal that they couldn't sell. 
explains American historian and treasure hunter Ed Foster. Trabuco therefore entrusted the American pilot William Elliott with a special operation. Elliott was to carry out ten secret flights into the desert in New Mexico. The task was to transport the gold by plane to the desert, where it would be loaded onto trucks and taken away to an unknown location. Mosier, to whom Trabuco did not reveal where the gold would be buried, allegedly chooses a different route for his flights each time. And during one of the last flights, he flies over a peculiar mesa and supposedly sees where the gold is being stored. Subsequently, reports about the pilot cease. Was he perhaps murdered by Trabuco? Or did he later return for the gold? We only know that Trabuco's comrades met their deaths under very strange circumstances over the course of four years. Were there perhaps some deadly disputes among the companions? Enthusiasts of mysteries point out that Trabuco and his men may have stumbled upon a burial ground of the Navajo Indian tribe while burying the treasure. Allegedly, they threw out the bones and replaced them with gold. Did they incur some Navajo curse because of this? Today, treasure hunters are eager for gold with incalculable value. Allegedly, it could be somewhere around Farmington in New Mexico. The route leading from Germany to the Alpine Fortress is now nicknamed the Golden Path. Hundreds of trains and trucks have traveled it, transporting both valuables and the Third Reich's most secret documents. Legends of hidden treasures began to emerge immediately after the war ended. They were fueled by random discoveries of hidden treasures, such as when several foresters near Salzburg suddenly became rich, and it was revealed that they had found several bags with gold bars in the forest. Similar stories attracted and still attract more and more treasure hunters to the area. Some treasures were discovered by the Allies after the war, but according to experts, they represent only a fraction of what is still hidden in the Alps. In the Ausserland region, there are believed to be many more treasures, some in the icy waters of mountain lakes, others deep in abandoned mines or artificially excavated tunnels. In 1946, Americans found parts of a torn Nazi accounting book, which mentioned a hiding place somewhere in Ausserland, where $166 million in Swiss francs, $299 million in dollar bills, $31 billion in gold, $3 million in diamonds, $93 million in valuable stamps and art objects, and other valuables totaling $37 billion were transferred. This treasure has never been found, although both the army and treasure hunters thoroughly searched for it. In 2016, a 16-year-old girl sparked a new gold rush in the Alps when she was diving in the famous Lake Königsee near Berchtesgaden, where Adolf Hitler's headquarters were located. The girl discovered a gold bar at the bottom of the lake, about two meters deep. She reported the find to the police, and a team of police divers was dispatched to the scene. However, they found nothing else. Nevertheless, treasure hunters immediately began flocking to the lake, convinced by the discovery that one of the Nazi gold treasures was hidden in the lake, as locals also claim. Could a huge treasure still be located somewhere in the Alps? That's all from us for today. If you're interested in videos filled with mysterious mysteries, dark stories, legends, or monsters, and you crave more, subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any new videos.